Cheers. Right, so can everyone hear me? Is the mic working? Yeah? Feedback, guys. Come on, I can't see you, so I'm just going to have to hear from you. Um, big thanks to Carl and Charlotte and the team and all of you guys for having me here today. Now, I've got to apologise. I'm not as slick as some of the presenters you're going to see today or have already seen, so I'm going to be using a few notes. Now, before I kick off, um, I'd better explain what this badge is. This badge is for Global Entrepreneurship Week. I'm an ambassador for Global Entrepreneurship Week, and I need something from you. Now, with the lights on me, I don't know if I'm going to be able to see this, and I don't know if we can lower them down a bit. But what I want to do is I want to take a photo of you guys so that we can put it out for the G20 and uh, Global Entrepreneurship Week website. So, wave, guys, come on. Wave, look as if you're having fun. Come on. Brilliant. Right, that's done, and now we can get on with it. Now, just as a way of background, Global Entrepreneurship Week is something that started in... Um, let's get this up. That's the hashtag for Global Entrepreneurship Week. If you're on Twitter, follow it. It's useful. It's taking place this week. It started in the UK in 2004, and it's currently taking place in over 100, companies, 100 countries worldwide and engaging hundreds of thousands of young people, people like yourselves. As I said, I'm an ambassador for it. Follow it. It's a really great movement. There are thousands of events happening all over the UK, and it's great that this TEDx youth event is happening during Global Entrepreneurship, uh, Global Entrepreneurship Week as well. Now, this is me. So that's my Twitter thing, uh, whatever you call it. You can follow me. Um, I have a tendency to rant and ramble. So my wife keeps telling me I have a real tendency to monologue as well. So I think it's fair to say this talk is going to jump around a little bit. must probably have very lack of focus. I'll lose track a few times just to warn you in advance. Um, but I promise you one thing. I'm absolutely passionate about youth, youth enterprise and youth entrepreneurship. I really, it is my big driver. It's what I absolutely love doing. Um, uh, so no matter where it goes, and if you lot don't understand what the hell I'm talking about half the time, or if I've totally lost track, at least you know I'm passionate and I'm enjoying what I'm saying anyway. <laughs> so if you want to give me feedback, good or bad, uh, good or bad, Twitter, follow me, say nasty stuff, say nice stuff, whatever, it'll be great. Now a quick tip before we get, uh, before we get started. If um, you're useless like me at public speaking, not particularly great at it and feel uncomfortable, a key thing is to try and get audience participation. So I'm going to be doing a little bit of that, and it's a way of sort of hiding my own failings and uh, all that sort of stuff. So we're going to start off with a bit of audience participation, and it's going to be a bit of a pop quiz, so you've got to shout out. So that's a question mark, obviously. Does anyone know what that stat is? It's to do with the United States. It's to do with companies in the United States, Fortune 500 companies, massive global brands, multinationals. Does anyone want to shout out what that <coughs> random percentage is up there? Anyone at all? Someone's got to say something, otherwise I'm going to look like an idiot standing here. Profits per year. Pardon? Profits per year. Profits per year. Anyone else? 87% started as entrepreneurship. Good one. Anyone else? No? Right, well, what it is, is it's the number of businesses in the United States which employ five or fewer people. Okay? 87% of businesses in the United States, five or fewer people. Does anyone know what this slide is? It's a US-focused one, again, to do with business. 96%. Uh, Anyone want to have a shout-out? Anything? Ten or fewer people. Ten or fewer people. It's a good point. Anyone else? Sole traders. Sole traders. That's a really good point, actually. Anyone else? No? Right, it's the percentage of jobs currently created in the UK by small businesses. 96%. Your FTSE 100 companies are not creating jobs. Small businesses are creating jobs. They're the drivers. Small businesses, startups, they're the drivers <coughs> of an economy. And they really are in the UK, as you'll see from that. Um, now, I don't want to be... And the reason why I wanted to talk about this is there's a lot of talk about corporates. There's a lot of talk about big business. It's in the press. It's in the Telegraph, Times, FT, all papers, broadsheet, tabloid. They all talk about big companies. Actually, small companies are where it's at where it always is at, and let's forget, let's never forget, big companies start off small. You know, every company starts off as a small company. So, now I'm not going to be too negative, but I wanted to put a couple of other stats at you. Over 60% current failure rate of businesses in the UK within the first 18 months. It's tough. Over 1 million people, Carl mentioned it just now, current unemployment rate for young people in the UK. If you take in different areas, it's actually a bit higher. 7 billion people, population of the planet at the moment. And then we have you. You're an individual. 
it's looking tough. You look at that, you look at those facts and you think, bloody hell, I'm screwed. Where am I going to go? Competition is tough at the moment. Everyone is competing for everything, every job. People are getting trained. Thousands of highly qualified entrepreneurs, highly qualified business students, mathematicians are coming out of India and China every year, tens of thousands. But it's just you. And it shouldn't, you shouldn't think of that as a negative. It is tough. And you know, we had the million unemployed. Being unemployed is tough. It is really difficult. I was unemployed for a bit. I'm not going to sit here and tell you it's fine. It's OK. Oh, it's all right. You're unemployed. You can do your own thing. It's morally draining. It's emotionally draining. It is really, really, really difficult. But there's an argument to say that, yeah, it is difficult. But is that such a bad thing? If you can go through that, if you can deal with that, if you can then pick yourself up and drive yourself forward, life is tough. Life is difficult. So it doesn't necessarily need to be of a difficult thing. But you do need to surround yourself with doers rather than talkers. You need to surround yourself with people who are passionate, can support you, can help you, develop you. You should never be upset about turning around and saying, you know what, I lost my job, I'm unemployed, this, that and the other. I went part-time at one of the organisations I work for. I was thinking, yeah, it's going to be great. But all these different contracts up that I was going to do, none of them materialised. So a year later, I've got 40% less salary than I did a year ago and I still can't work out how to monetize what I actually do. So, uh, yeah, but it, is a, it isn't a negative, it's a positive. And there's loads and loads and loads of opportunity out there. Social media, the internet, everything like that has totally, totally leveled the playing field. There is more opportunity now, I feel, than there ever has been at any other period in time. When people complain, when people moan, they're talking about a problem, they're talking about an issue. They're talking about something, and therefore there is something that can be created to solve that problem, to solve that issue, to solve this thing going on. There is real, real opportunity out there. The, these people, these people with the issues who are talking, want to engage, they want to do stuff. They really do. And with internet and all the rest of it, it doesn't matter if you're in the city, it doesn't matter if you're in the house, a Hebrides or on a farm. If you've got a laptop, if you've got an internet connection, you can start thinking about how you can make your idea, your passion, your dream a reality. So the session, this session is collaboration, and it really, really is key. Working together, engaging each other, supporting, helping, driving ideas forward. Remember a combined focus, a combined group effort is stronger than an individual. Nothing starts as an individual. And trust me when I say what I do today, what I'm involved with today, I couldn't do it without support of other people and engagement of other people, organisations, individuals, etc. Collaboration is absolutely critical. Now, working with people, engaging with people, it could be people in this room, people in other schools, it could be your family, it could be friends, it could be strangers you meet, <coughs> and stuff like this. This is where you create this sort of collaborative effort in what you're trying to do, to what you're trying to make, to what you're trying to do to become a reality. And this is where I want to try out something with the review. We're going to need the lights up in a second. Um, so you've heard of Alcoholics Anonymous. So this is going to be a little bit like Alcoholics Anonymous, but without the beer, sadly. So we're going to call it Entrepreneurs Anonymous. Now, uh, if we can bring the lights up in the main room a bit, that would be great. Now, stick up your hands if you heard what an elevator pitch is. Does anyone here know what an elevator pitch is? Apart from Neil and Robin. Anyone else know what an elevator pitch is? Right, OK. Now, that's a good start, but a bit of a worrying start. Elevator pitch, basically, is if you get into a lift and you suddenly realise, Christ, the person next to me in the lift is Richard Branson, James Dyson, Bill Gates, whoever it might be. If you get into that lift, you've got 30 seconds between floors to pitch them your idea. So what I want you to all do is stand up. Everyone stand up. Come on. We haven't got much time. Got my clock ticking away down there. Now what I want you to do, and this is, I'll explain why I'm doing this in a second. We're going to focus on failings and strengths. Okay? So we're going to start off with an easy one. I want you to turn around, ideally, I know you must probably be sitting in your school groups, but ideally try and turn around to someone near, near you who isn't in your school group, You've got 15 seconds to tell them a strength, and they've got 15 to seconds to tell you a strength. So go, do it now. You've got 30 seconds. It can be any strength, whatever it does. It doesn't have to be business, it could be sports, anything, artistic, anything. Right, and swap round. Okay, guys, no, hush, be quiet, be quiet. No. Okay, this is good that you're all talking, but shut up. 
<laughs> OK? Right, now we've got to do the difficult one. Failings. Again, 15 seconds. Be as open as you want. Could be anything. Sport, anything. I'm not a particularly good sports person. I keep trying to go to the gym, spend a huge amount of money every month, and I never go. It's a total waste of time for me. <laughs> to have a chat with them about your failings. 15 seconds each. Go. <laughs> <laughs> you can take your seats again. Now, what have you been doing here? What is the point? What is the point of this exercise? To firstly start getting different individuals talking amongst each other. But it's about team. You're creating a team. And this is what anything is about. It doesn't matter if you're in sports. Very few sports are not team-based. Even if you're not running in a team or rowing in a team, you've got a support team around you, helping you, supporting you, developing you. Same in business. To make your idea reality, you're going to need a team. And that team, you've got to have an open, frank conversation with each other. You've got to know what your failings are. You've got to know what their failings are. You've got to know what your strengths are. Focus on your strengths, know what your failings are, and get people on board who have strengths where your failings are. Then you don't have to worry about your failings. Someone else in your team is doing that, and you know what? They're great at it. It's fantastic. You don't need to worry about stuff like that. So regardless of what anyone tells you, I'm a big believer in team. Get your team together. Now. It's not business as usual. It's a bit obvious. But I'll just do a couple of, minute, couple of seconds on this. The power is shifting from west to east, the developed economies to the developing economies. China, India, Indonesia, Vietnam, etc. You can hardly call them developing, really. They are developed and they're growing at a fantastic rate. But also remember that the shift is taking place in countries as well, in individual countries like the UK. Influence of individuals, engagement of people, the younger generation, you guys here, have got more influence than any generation at your age level ever before. You can go out on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, etc. You can do blog posts, you can do video posts, all the rest of it. You can get your voice heard. Your customers, even your business, can get their voice heard too. Listen to them. See where the current established big businesses are failing. Think, all right, I can do that better than you. I'm going to go out there and do that. And I can see where your customers are complaining. I'm going to engage with them directly. So it is not, and it's never going to be business as usual. There is now more shift, there is more focus, there is more influence given back to the consumer than ever before. It's fantastic. It is incredibly exciting. So what, what are the advantages for you guys, for small businesses, for entrepreneurs or rest of it? You can be quick, you can be reactive, you can be responsive. Whereas a big company needs to go to a PR agency, marketing agency, etc., you can do quickly, you can be nimble, you can be disruptive as well. It's absolutely key. You can answer some of the major issues that are facing society at the moment. You can develop ideas which are going to drive this forward. The riots we saw a couple of months ago, there's opportunity. Young people need to be engaged. They need to be supported. They need to feel part of the country, part of the community. There are opportunities here. I know Carl's with Unlimited, and he'll be able to talk a bit more about Unlimited. Fantastic organisation. Really listen to what he's got to say. So, moving quickly on. G20 Entrepreneurs Alliance. Now, I've got about one minute, 30 seconds left, so I'm going to rush through this. What is it? What is it about? It's a movement of individuals like myself and organisations like the ones I'm involved with around all the key major nations, 20 largest economies in the globe. It's putting together sharing ideas. And what I would do is share some ideas with you, just to get you thinking, really. Brazil. Every seven-year-old in Brazil now takes classes in entrepreneurialism. Mexico, every eight-year-old within two years will be taking classes in entrepreneurialism. Germany have a fantastic dual education system in place, whereby every young person has the opportunity to do a work placement as part of their overall education process. France, get this, this is a good one. If you're unemployed in France and you want to set up a business, you can ask for all your unemployment benefit for two years in one go, and that will help fund your business. They'll give you mentoring support as well. Now, how about that? That's quite an interesting one. And finally, obviously, China does things big, China, if you set up a business in China, you don't have to pay tax for three years. So that's always a positive. In the UK, what's our USP? What's our unique selling point? Just because I think it's important to keep positive. We are a nation of shopkeepers. We're a nation of traders. We're a hugely diverse nation with different groups, different people, different backgrounds making us up. That is a massive USP. We're a rich tapestry. We have, all, we have a sort of global community in a country that sits on an island with only 60 million people. 
it's a real positive that also to be frank you can set up a business today you can register at the company's house you could be trading by the evening trust me some of the countries it is bloody difficult to get to that point so with the right people yes the economy economy is tough yes jobs are difficult it's hard to come by yes things are going to remain tough but with the right people the right team your idea can become reality don't be afraid to speak to people open yourself up be willing to share ideas your thoughts your worries your passions, your drivers, share them, share the excitement of your dream. Be willing to collaborate, be willing to work together. Do this with your business and your idea, your dream will be a success. Quickly, Startup Smarter, IED thing, it's free. Loads of fact sheets on there. If you're setting up a business, go on there, it'll talk to you all about some of the basics that you need to think about. You don't need to register totally free. Follow Global Entrepreneurship Week, see what's going on, engage with that, have a final thing. Finally, employ people who are, be who are better than you. It's key. Any business person, any person who's a success will tell you, employ people who are them better than you. They will make you ensure that you are delivering over 110% every day. You'll come into work, you'll drive, you'll be incredibly inspired and passionate, and also you'll be working with great individuals. So again, my Twitter side, tell me if you like what I said, tell me if you don't, it's absolutely fine. Hope my ramblings have been of some help, some interest, and we saw Steve Jobs mention just now, I'll finish with one thing, his famous quote was, stay happy, stay foolish. Stay hungry, stay foolish. Really and do that. Enjoy what you do. Enjoy the rest of your day. And thanks very much. Cheers.